Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about constipation. I see so many cases of constipation in my busy Ayurvedic practice, and just like everything else I treat, the underlying causes need to be addressed. We don't want to just take laxatives since they can be habit-forming, and sometimes, especially if they've been used for too long, they can even damage the nerves in the gut, making it literally impossible to move your bowels. And as I always say, the underlying causes of any disease in any given person are usually more than one, and they're usually a little different in each person. And this is definitely true with constipation. Now, the ancient doctor said that before any prescription is written for herbs, you must first see what the patient is doing wrong and tell them to stop doing those things, otherwise the herbs might not be so effective. So let's see what some of the more common causes might be and then we can discuss how we might treat those underlying causes. Now, one of the most common causes of constipation is if the apana, the subdosha or subsection of vata which resides in the intestinal region, moves upwards. Apana vata is a downward flow which moves the bowel movement down, as well as the menstrual flow and even babies during delivery. So if apana moves up, it can make it difficult to move your bowels. Now, in the case of the menstrual flow, it can cause painful periods and even endometriosis as the blood mistakenly moves upwards into the fallopian tubes and out into the abdominal cavity. And if your apana is moving upwards at the time of labor, it could prolong the labor time, making it difficult for the baby to move downwards through the birth canal. Now, apana moves upwards if you have too many thoughts in the mind if you hyperanalyze things, you talk on the phone too long, or you talk too much in general. Pranavada is that movement of thoughts through the mind. So if the thoughts become too much, the pranavada in the head sucks up the apana to give it more energy. Apana can also move up if you rush throughout the day. Multitasking, you push yourself without periods of proper rest or an early bedtime. And in general, the vada can go out of balance if the diet is too light and dry, especially, especially if you eat lots of raw foods and salads, as well as other cold foods, since vada is cold, dry, and light. Therefore, a cold, dry, and light diet can aggravate vada. Now, to balance vada, you need the opposite. You need warm cooked foods and an unctuous diet, which includes ghee, olive oil, avocados, nuts, and seeds which is why boiled milk is perhaps the most vata pacifying food of all, as long as you can digest it properly. This is also why you feel every cell in your body unwinding and relaxing as you sip on the boiled milk. This is what it feels like when the vata settles down. In fact, a common treatment for constipation in Ayurveda is one cup of boiled milk with a teaspoon of ghee stirred into it to help lubricate the bowel more. Now, another reason for constipation, which is also related to the apana moving up, is that the gallbladder might not release bile as the stomach contents squirt into the duodenum, which is the very beginning of the small intestines. See, the bile flow gives you the urge to move your bowels. So there's many reasons why the bile might not squirt out of the gallbladder. Let's look at some of these reasons because this is a large, huge underlying cause of constipation. See, if you just take a laxative to move your bowels, it might work. But you might really need to be, what you might really need to be doing are using herbs and foods to promote the bile flow. Luckily, nature gave us so many of these herbs and foods, which I use all day, every day in my really busy practice. So here's the reason the bile might not flow. One reason is that your bile might become thick, like a sludge. This happens if you eat or drink cold foods and beverages. Think of it this way, all the fats in your diet, plus the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K, the fat-soluble toxins, and even the fatty hormones like estrogen, which is made from cholesterol, all have to go to the gallbladder to be processed. So any cold foods and beverages you ingest can solidify those fats being held in the gallbladder, causing them to congeal, resulting in bile sludge, or the bile Instead of being thin, flowing, liquid that it usually is, it becomes thick like a sludge or, or like a toothpaste. Then it can no longer flow easily out of the gallbladder, creating constipation. Also, the sphincter in the gallbladder, known as the sphincter of Adi, must relax and open 
to allow the bile to flow through it. In order for the sphincter to relax, you have to be relaxed yourself. But again, if your vada is high and you're, you're feeling anxious or nervous, the sphincter might not be able to open and allow the bile to flow through, also resulting in constipation. And if the sphincter opens up under the presence of magnesium, which relaxes the muscles of the sphincter, um, if the magnesium goes low, which is very common deficiency in the majority of the population, then the sphincter of Adi might not be able to open up to allow that bile to flow through, again, resulting in constipation. And this is because magnesium relaxes, so it relaxes that sphincter to allow the bile to flow. You might also get constipated if you don't drink enough water. If you're not taking in enough water, your colon will pull water from the stool to keep you hydrated, which will then dry out the stool, resulting in constipation. Extra water in the stool makes it softer and helps it to pass more smoothly. I've had many people tell me their bowel movements move much better once they increase their water intake. And you might also get constipated if you eat too many dry foods, like chips, rice cakes, pretzels, or starches like rice, oatmeal, and other grains. Pastas and breads are especially constipating as the white flour they contain can slow up the bowel movement. All grains are somewhat binding, so if you're constipated, try eating less grains and more fresh fruits and cooked vegetables. The fiber in these types of foods can help to soften up the bowel movement so it can flow better and be less hard. Ayurveda does not recommend a low-fat diet, <clears throat> but instead a diet which contains fats that will not clog the arteries or any other channels. See, a diet rich in beneficial fats is important for many reasons, one of which is that it'll keep the bowel lubricated, which prevents constipation. Always remember that the seed of vada, that element of dryness, which can literally dry us out, is located in the intestinal region. And as we age, we must combat this tendency to dry up by keeping an unctuous diet, which is somewhat confusing to some people since we've been told our whole lives that we need to follow a low-fat diet. This incorrect information has led many people to develop all kinds of health problems, one of which is constipation as our bowel movements dry up as we go deeper into the Vata stage of life, which occurs after age 50 and beyond. Nature has given us many herbs and foods to help facilitate bile flow and bowel movements, but it's best to work with your Ayurvedic practitioner to learn how to use all these herbal treatments since you don't want to aggravate the other dos doshas like pitta and kapha, for example, as you take these herbs or change your diet. But once you learn how to tailor a protocol for your own personal imbalances, you will be amazed at how healthy you feel as you keep your whole body balanced. And one final note here. <clears throat> Constipation can come from other reasons which are more serious than those I just mentioned, which is why I hesitate to tell you all the herbal treatments and foods that we use for constipation. If you have irritable bowel syndrome or inflammatory bowel disease, gastroparesis, or other more complicated diseases of the digestive tract, very careful and specific measures need to be taken than is required in just treating constipation in general. So you must proceed with caution since some of the herbal formulas like triphala can also scrape their way through the bowel removing old fecal material and toxins stuck in the walls of the bowel. But this scraping action might be too irritating for those patients with intractable inflammatory bowel disease, or maybe those recovering from food poisoning, parasites, or other intestinal bugs, because the inside of the gut is very inflamed. I hope you can see that constipation can be treated successfully if you first identify all the underlying causes and then work with your Ayurvedic practitioner to come up with a treatment plan which will work for your own unique individual imbalances and not create harm as you address these issues. Thank you.